Un de toi. <laughs> Un de toi. Okay, welcome everybody. I would like to introduce Miss April Pet of April in Paris Tours. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Let's see, April and I have known each other many years. Yeah, 2015. Okay, since mm -hmm. you started since your tours. Since the get-go, yeah. Right, okay, yeah. when it wasn't called April in Paris. No, at first, no, I called it Paris for you luxury tours, but Adrian, influenced me a little bit with changing the name. I so. said April, your name's <laughs> April. Yes, yeah. Why is your tour company not called April in Paris? <laughs> <laughs> it was so logical. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I have to take credit for the name of her group. Is all. Anyway, um, April does the most amazing tours and she's gonna tell you all about it because I don't know anybody who knows more about the city than she does, actually. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Adrian. Thank you. Well, oh, <laughs> oh. bonjour. Hello, everybody. So Adrian named me, and then I named Emily. Okay, so just to let you know, I was around first all those years ago. So, um, well. It's nice to see some familiar faces today and some new faces as well. So thanks for coming. Happy New Year, everybody. So as Adrian mentioned, I am April from April in Paris Tours. And today I am going to tell you a little bit about my journey and how I ended up here in France and how I started my company, the tour company, kind of the... Uh, highs and lows of COVID and then kind of my, my projects for the future. So let's see. All right, there I am in total guide mode out there in Versailles. So not a day goes by where I don't have someone ask me the question, like, how did you end up here in Paris? How did you come up with the idea of starting your tour company? So, well, it goes back about 30, six and a half years ago yet. Yeah. I blame it on my Nona, okay? My Nona um, and my mom brought me to Italy for my very first birthday. And I believe it was that very single moment that really ignited this fire for me, for my uh, passion for travel and wander less. Even though I didn't know what was going on way back then, um, I believe it was this very first voyage over to the motherland that, uh, gave me this passion for travel and tourism. So, now my hometown, I'm Canadian by the way, yeah. So um, my hometown is called Thorold and it is uh, right next to Niagara Falls, okay? And at the young age of four, my mom started to bring me to Italian school. So every Saturday morning, she would drag me kicking and screaming away from my cartoons to put me in Italian courses. You see, Thorold, my hometown, has a very large community of, of Italians. I would say like 85% of us are Italians there. So like, I just wanted to be like the other kids, okay? I wanted to be in my pajamas, eating my cereal uh, in front of the TV, but no, oh no, that. April? Yes? I'm sorry. Uh, let okay. me do. Let me do this for you. Okay. Because I know you can see it up there. <coughs> okay. And and then there's better light on your face when you're closer. Okay. Okay. Is that so okay? Just, yeah. So you just tell me when. <laughs> just tell me when to hit next. Okay. Well, I might miss a few slides, so just bear with me if I'm not looking at it so well. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So I just wanted to be like all the other kids sat in front of the TV, eating my cereal, watching Saturday morning cartoons. Um, never did I realize back then what an important um, weekly event for 10 years this was going to be and what an important part of my future it would uh, play as well. So, yes. Next. Yes. So <laughs> when I was nine, I started learning uh, French. And, you know, I like to have thought of myself as a natural born linguist um, because starting to learn Italian at such a young age, by the time it came around to start studying French in elementary school, um, all of the rules of conjugation and pronouns were all quite the same, since French and Italian are both derived from Latin language, right? Um, so from that very moment, I decided I was going to be a translator. So, all right. Now, I continued my studies, my French and Italian studies, all through high school. So this is me, my first trip to Paris with some girls from my high school. You can see the Musée d'Orsay there in the, in the uh, background, in the Seine. Um, so 
during my last year of my high school studies, I was presented with an opportunity to come to Paris for my very first time. And I remember my first glimpse of Paris. You know, we all jumped off the plane, dropped off our suitcases, and headed into the city. So my hometown of Thorold, it's very tiny, okay? Only 18,000 people live in Thorold. So just young, small town girl coming to the big city of light for the first time. I exited the metro at Place de la Concorde and my eyes grew wider and wider with amazement as the gold on the Luxor obelisk was shimmering. The dancing fountains twinkled before my eyes. And, well, of course, the Eiffel Tower was there in the distance, too, waving bonjour. You know, never did I imagine back then as a young 17-year-old girl that I would move here a decade later and start my life and, like, start, start my company. Okay. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. I don't get it. Let's see. Okay, there, uh, I, I, no, I'll it's tell like you. There, yeah, there. it's there. I don't know. Yeah, it's a, it's because it's a movie. This is a film clip. That's why. Oh, oh you might have to put it on silent so I can talk over it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We've got to oh. roll with the punches. Hey. Okay. So, so wait. <laughs> okay. So you. Okay. I got it. Wait. Wait. You want me to take off the take off the audio? Yep. Okay. You ready? Okay. You want me to you want me to click on it? Sure. Then? That you just click on it and it and it. It should plays? work. Yeah. Uh uh. No. No. Hmm. That opened Zoom. That opened YouTube. Oh. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, I see what's happening. OK. <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. It's OK. We don't need it to work. That's, it's not going to be the end of the world. So okay. anyway, so then I, had, I was faced with the decision of what I was going to study when I went off to university. So naturally, I decided to go along the uh, language path. And so for my third year of university, um, I studied at a university called Brock University. It was just a stone's throw from my mom's house. And um, I had the opportunity to come abroad again for my third year of studies. And this time was a little bit different. I couldn't just jump on the plane with my classmates um, because I was planning to come over to Europe for um, just over a year, okay? And so I was going to have to deal with visas and paperwork and proof of accommodation in Europe. And it was that then when my Nona suggested to apply for my Italian citizenship. So long story short, okay, um, my mom was born in Canada to Italian parents. So um, she was able to have the dual nationality. Now, m a few years later is when my Nono and Nona obtained their Canadian citizenship. That's, so your, that's your grandmother. Yeah, my right? grandparents, yeah, yeah, yeah mom's side, <laughs> yeah. And so, um, so at the time that I obtained my Italian citizenship, it was up until third generation. So and that was one of the best pieces of advice that I could have ever taken from my Nona back then. And so, I mean, it wasn't all that simple. There was still a lot of paperwork to do. What's up with this? Uh, this country, hey, and I mean, with the whole of Europe, with all the paperwork that they uh, need us to fill out in order to like just enjoy our time. It's, here. Wor it's, wor it's <laughs> worse to <laughs> get you. No, it's worse to get U.S. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Sure. Yeah. Apparently, who is that? Oh, it's from one of my favorite movies, uh, uh, Auberge Espagnol. Yeah, okay. do you know, you know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's just um, one of the students. He's leaving actually France to go to Barcelona, and it's just about all the paperwork. So like, it was just same very experience that I had. So anyway, so I arrived here in France um, with a shiny new passport, and you know that year abroad was one of the best years of my life. I dove into the French culture. My language skills were improving by the daily. I had cheap cheese and baguettes at my finger, <laughs> fingertips. And well, I actually studied in the south of France in a town called Perpignan. I don't know if you're familiar with that. So on weekends, I was able to travel around France, go across the border to Barcelona, ski, go to the beach, yeah. No bills to pay, it was awesome, yeah. Um, so I, I spent 10 months down in Perpignan, and the day came to bid au revoir to my classmates and my, to my friends, and my tears flowed freely as I boarded my plane back to Canada. So, okay. 
Okay. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I got yeah, it. it's good. Wow. Um, well, there's just, you can keep going. Some photos from a year abroad. Yeah. There I am, my last night uh, with my with my uh, fellow Where are you? students. You're in the middle? Is that you right in the middle? I'm in the middle, yeah, in the pink, of uh -huh. course. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I set back off to my hometown of Thorold, um, and there I uh, found a job working as the executive assistant to the director of tourism of my town. So, has anyone been to the Niagara region? Yeah, yes. uh huh. A few of us have it over yeah. here. Yeah, did you like it? What'd you do? Yeah, <laughs> no, you don't like it in the winter. Yeah, it's pretty cold in the winter. A few weeks ago, the snow was almost as tall as me, so yeah, but um, I really enjoyed my time <laughs> working uh, for the director of tourism. I was the only French speaker on the team, so I was able to use my French skills that I had spent all those years kind of fine-tuning and meet people from all over the world to introduce them to my hometown and to my beautiful region of Niagara. So after a few years of, hi, um, of being settled back home, I started getting itchy feet once again. So this time I had my sights on Australia, yeah, so no matter how many times my uncle tried to bribe me, he was going to come over and cut the grass at my house every week, I still said, all right, it's time for me to get out of here again. So, all right, oh, it just takes a minute. Some are slides that kind of interact, yeah. Maybe hit it again, yeah. Oh, oh, oh there I am, yeah. Very clever. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of behind the scene jobs, not just welcoming guests to the Tourism Bureau, but uh, organizing community events. The Olympics came through Thorold a few years ago as well. There I am with the Mountie. <laughs> and um, anyway, so I said goodbye to Australia, or to Canada, and off to Australia I went. So now, <laughs> uh, I <laughs> love living down under. This one's working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I really did love living in Australia, you know, the, the promised land and every weekend I could surf, it was great. That's what missing in Paris is the, is the beach, okay? Perry Plage doesn't really cut it. So anyway, but when I was down under, I wasn't able to use my language skills very much. You know, I was losing my French and I'd spent all these years studying the French language and I wasn't um, working a job that I was very passionate about. So this time, I said goodbye to Australia, and I had my sights set on France here. So, oh, there's <laughs> Australia. There it is, yeah. <laughs> there, bonjour. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I arrived here in France. Actually, in 15 days, it will be nine years that I arrived in Paris. So, yeah, and I came here with the idea of uh, brushing up on my French that I had spent the last two years losing and I wanted to become a translator. This little girl, you know, who had these big dreams of being a translator when she started studying French all those years ago, arrived here in Paris to apply at the Sorbonne. My French was very rusty, mind you, okay? So it wasn't really up to par. Um, and so instead of starting my studies back then, I decided to set about um, to improve my French language skills, so I would. Okay, I think you can change it there, Adrian. There. You mean we've seen so, that? We've seen that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so I set out into the city, um, and I would talk with the local market vendors, to the local cafe owners, to the bookshop owners, um, and so you know my French was improving daily. Now during this time, I also started working as a tour guide here in Paris. And um, I worked with the other company for, for a year, and I dedicated that entire year to improving my knowledge of Paris, setting out to find the best bistros, cafes, uh, markets, boulangeries, baguettes. So, all right, Adrian. Yes. So, after a year with this tour company, I was turning 30. And, you know, a lot of my friends, when they we're hitting the big 3-0, they fell apart at the seams. But after all of these years of soul searching, I finally 
found myself in the place that I wanted to be and I felt more motivated than ever. Now, this is when I decided to set off on my own. I was feeling inspired. I needed to do something a little bit more um, awarding for my heart, okay? And that's when I decided to launch April and Paris Tours. So, there I am, <laughs> jumping for joy, I did it! Yeah, now, <laughs> I, so I left uh, the tour company and now it's day one, all right? It's June 2015. I'm sitting at my blank computer screen and the panic sets in. Like I had the knowledge of Paris, but I didn't have any idea of how to start my own company, all right? And so I stared at my blank screen and then um, all these ideas came pouring through and I started to type up, you can change it now, yes, my um, brainstorming ideas, okay? Oh. And before I knew it, my Here page- we go again. let's see. There we go. There we go. Typing away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so all of these ideas were flooding onto my screen. And I had put out a few feelers, okay? I had talked about this new idea to some of my uh, friends and family. <laughs> and like before I knew it, people, friends, loved ones, contacts from all around the globe started to reach out. And they wanted to help me with web design, graphic design, yeah, um, helping me with like my logo, social media. And so, you know, I am ever so grateful for all of these people who raised a helping hand. And before I knew it, I had partners across the city, a website that was up and going, a bag full of business cards. And voila, I was a businesswoman. <laughs> Oh, there I am. <laughs> There's Adrian. And you know, that first year uh, proved to be quite successful. People were coming into Paris from all around the globe. And then disaster strikes, okay? As you all know, Paris was the victim of two horrible uh, um, terrorist Attack. attacks back in 2015, right after the second one being right after I launched my company. And after that second attack, you know, all of my tours canceled for the rest of the year. I never thought that I would have a tour request ever again. So I had to get creative. And so this is when I um, wrote an email, kind of like a press release to a few different journalists and bloggers and writers in Paris, trying to explain like why I thought Paris would persevere after this like dark time. And then I invited these people to come along for a tour. And so that's when I met Adrian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so Adrian came along on one of my tours. I think I even taught you a few things. Hey, Absolutely. Adrian. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and Adrian wrote a beautiful article about me. And with the encouragement of my new friend and her followers, and you know, the, the people I had already brought on tour, and including my, my loved ones, you know. Uh, they gave me the encouragement that things would be okay. So tourism came back in full force after that. And really in 2019, it was the busiest year I had. Um, I had about 300 tour requests that year. So going into 2020, <laughs> I was gearing up for the busiest year ever, okay? And then disaster strikes again. So when the, okay, Adrian, I think, yeah. Oh, there I am with a group, yes. Uh, after the word, good word got out that it was okay to come back to Paris. All right, yes. That's after COVID? Before? No, this is before. after the attacks, before oh, COVID, COVID. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Disaster strikes again, yes. You know, <laughs> COVID, <laughs> like with COVID, of course, I did not work for 16 months. Okay, um, by the time March 2020 um, had come around, borders were being closed. All of my tours had been canceled or uh, rescheduled for a later date in Paris as I knew it, as we all knew it, right? I mean, many of you have been to Paris before, I'm assuming. Um, you know, the city just wasn't the city that we knew and loved anymore. Uh, so I, We remember this. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was unbelievable. I know, yeah. What is the slide on, the, what's the photo on the lower right? I don't understand. The, the, those are terrace, terrace chairs, 
Oh, the, stacked, oh, the chair stacked, stacked, stacked inside. inside of a cafe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Wow. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. wow. so, so Paris, as we knew it, like, you know, the whole city was a ghost town. Mm -hmm. The soul was missing. Now, I made it back to Canada just in the nick of time. Um, you know, it was much better to be back with my parents in their house rather than my 140 square foot studio here in Paris. I've moved since then. I've upgraded, by the way. So anyway, um, and so I had to put my thinking cap on again. All right, I think that's good. Yeah, so there I am. She's back. Yeah, I'm back giving virtual tours of Paris from, from my mom's house. I think you took this photo, actually. Adrian, it's yeah, yeah, from, so, from Zoom, from Zoom, yeah. So I started offering uh, virtual tours on Zoom. You can see the Eiffel Tower just ever so slightly in the okay. background there, um, and it was really quite amazing to see how m many people would tune in to these virtual events. Um, yeah, it's very similar. So it's like my quite. Parisian uh, Parisian attire. I forgot the beret today at home. Sorry about that. You need one? <laughs> <laughs> Happened to have one. Yeah, that doesn't surprise <laughs> me. So, um, but I remember one one evening I, I hosted one of these virtual tours and there was 42 people there and they had tuned in from all around the world, from Australia, New Zealand, Israel, through uh, the States as far as Hawaii so that was like it was so encouraging and it was such a great way for like armchair travel as we called it back mm -hmm. then yes so all right now I came back to Paris with the anticipation that uh, the borders would reopen um, you know the lockdowns had ended but uh, wasn't quite that scenario because the borders stayed closed for quite some time so during those months um, I decided to work on some new projects. So one of my close friends lives in Chablis. So I went out to Chablis for four months. And there I um, have friends who are winemakers. So I would follow them around their winery, taking notes, helping with um, the tying of the vines, fighting off the frost and taste testing, which was the best part in my opinion. <laughs> and so once the borders finally reopened, um, I launched a Chablis tour. So it's a day trip out to Burgundy, um, and there we get to visit the vines. Um, you can flip through there yet. Yeah. Taste the wines. Up there. Wait, no, that's. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's at one of the wineries that's it, that's it. there. Yeah. Um, and have personal, like one on one lunches with the winemakers in their private calves, go horseback riding through the vines. I mean, there's a few different options, but it's proven to be. Uh, a, quite a fun day out. Okay, Adrian, yeah. There we are, horseback riding in the vines. Yep, okay, mm -hmm. keep yeah. going, yep. So there we are with one of the winemakers. Well, I love a crisp glass of Chablis. Um, my favorite wine though is the bubbly kind, yeah? And so, all right, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was able to spend quite a bit of time in the Champagne region of France as well. Um, one of my really good friends over there, he was living uh, in Champagne at the time. And so during um, a few weeks in Champagne, uh, we drove around meeting the local Champagne makers. Again, getting to taste their wines, visit the calves, go descend down into the Creer. So it was really great market research. And so um, this is one of my other uh, newest Hi. Um, tours that I've launched since the borders have reopened. So I date to Champagne. Yes. So we can flick through here. <laughs> there we actually, yeah, we do a Sabre Master Class as well. So <laughs> big sword, hey. <laughs> Visit the vines. Mm -hmm. Okay. There we are. So, okay. Yeah. Keep going? Yeah. All right. So I have jumped on the Emily and Paris bandwagon. As I mentioned, she did steal my name. Um, so she should be supporting this uh, new venture for me. So um, has anyone seen the show? 
Sure. Yeah, a few of us. Yeah, I've been watch, binge watched season three twice already. Um, and so I have recently started offering a um, tour of the filming locations for Emily in Paris. So it's a fun mix of the locations and history. <laughs> we stop um, for some Emily in Paris food over at Breakfast in America as well. So thank you guys <laughs> for the Emily platter. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. So, um, you know, what's next? Will it be April in Rome, April in New York, April in that's Dubai? My that's my niece. Yeah, that's your niece, yeah. You yeah. came on a tour with her. I think her. I talked to her. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, maybe will I expand? I don't know. I don't think those other cities quite have the same ring. So April in Paris, I think I'll just stick here for now, hey. Now, people sometimes ask me, like, don't you get tired of seeing the same thing day in and day out? And the answer is no, never. A absolutely not. Because... I mean, Paris, first of all, is the most beautiful city in the entire world, and it's all the fine details of all the buildings, of, of the, the fencing, of the terraces that make it so outstandingly beautiful. And really, it is um, the joy and the excitement of the people that I meet pretty well on a daily basis. So I'm just going to show you some highlights of uh, some of the different tours that I offer here. Oops. Yeah, yoga in Versailles. No. <laughs> That's great. Sorry. Can, yeah. Okay. There. Cycling in Versailles as well. Versailles is my most popular tour. So I saw you there just last week. Hey, Sarah. Yeah. Uh, Eiffel Tower. Oh, they're so blurry. I don't know. Eiffel. Okay. You can just. I don't know yeah. why. There I am. So, a left bank walk and a, a kids' tour where we rent the boats for the little pond in the Luxembourg Garden. Chris had just proposed to his uh, girlfriend there in that picture, too. Look how excited she is. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Musée d'Orsay. Mm hmm. Food. Yes, I do a little food. I'm a foodie, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We've got Montmartre by day and by night. Is that is that the um, we were talking earlier? Yeah, that's the, the I love you wall that I we talked about. Wall. Yeah, yeah. I've, never, I have never seen it. You have to come on another tour, Adrian. I yeah. know. <laughs> I don't get to Montmartre often enough. Is no. the problem. Yeah. Okay. So chocolate making classes, another one of the gourmet options, uh, market tours. This one's actually of uh, uh, my off the beaten path tour. So perfect for a Parisian veteran, that's like y'all, okay. <laughs> and then some of my um, achievements that I'm quite proud about is back in 20, 19, 20, 20, I won the award for best tour guide in Paris for Expatriates magazine, yeah. And then on TripAdvisor, as of this morning, there was nearly 1,500 tour companies that offer the same service as I, and I'm at number nine. So yeah, wow. so that's good. Yeah. That's so that's impressive. Yeah, thank you. That's so, impressive. So that's about it, really. Um, there is my website here, aprilinparistours.com. And if you're on social media, yeah, you can follow me uh, on Facebook, on Instagram, April in Paris Tours. I'm also, of course, like I said, on TripAdvisor, so you can see what others are saying about me and their experiences. And for you today, I have a special gift, okay? Um, I'm offering you a Paris City walking tour. 20% off of your first uh, tour. So feel free to come and uh, pick one of these little brochures up on your way out. And there's a code on the back for that says Adrian. So make sure you mention <laughs> that if you decide to book, okay? So that's about it from me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Does anyone have any questions I for me? <laughs> All right. I want to know what drives you. What drives me? Yeah. Well, the, the city itself, you know, really. This is all true. And you, you talked about just the ideas you had from the beginning, you know, mm -hmm. from deciding, okay, I'm going to go back to my hometown and work here. No, no, I'm going to go to Australia. No, no, I'm going to go to France. And I'm going to try to do that. That's not working. I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what, what drives you to, to well, I think, well, like the original ideas of starting April in Paris tour was, you know, I, I had spent all those years really soul searching. So 30 years after, um, you know, it kind of like all just kind of came together for me. Um, after living in the most beautiful city in the world, after living a somewhat like nomadic life of my own and traveling and living around the world, uh, it only kind of like came natural at that point, you know, because I could have continued to work with this other tour company um, where I felt like I was maybe just a number, you know, and so I thought I could do this and maybe I could do it better. So voila, yeah. And I mean, what drives me really is just like, look at the city that we're in, right? I mean, I, I think that's as, <laughs> sums it up really it's just getting to explore and discover Paris even more you know I know a lot sure but there's always new things to learn and to discover and explore and then just the, seeing the joy and the excitement in the eyes of the people that I bring along what advice would you give a young entrepreneur just starting out be patient <laughs> and you, know, you have to work hard but surround yourself by a community who's going to support you no matter how wild your ideas are and just continue to chase <laughs> your dreams mm -hmm. thanks okay. what's your what's your favorite tour my favorite tour yeah what's the favorite um, one i would say probably versailles i really enjoy going to versailles and it's it's Why? just one, it's just one of them it's just so beautiful and and I don't just go to the chateau when I visit uh, Versailles I go to the market we have a picnic I have this really cool pannier a basket that I bring along with me and um, so we kind of have like this local Versailles experience by going to the market and having a coffee in one of the local cafes and everyone kind of knows me out there so everyone feels like they're really part of the community. My mom was here recently and we went out there together and she says I feel like I'm walking around with the mayor of Versailles. You know everybody, <laughs> you know, and then spend the day in, in the gardens and then at the end of the day just visit the, the palace then so yeah it's a long day but it's just an amazing day it's one of my favorite places in the whole world so mm -hmm. yeah so. any other questions well somebody had just asked me this question the other day actually I have one lady who comes back to Paris every year and she kind of requests obscure ideas. So recently she reached out and she wanted to see the basements of Paris because I do you organize mean like the calves. Like the calves, yeah. But, you know, I had to really, I started brainstorming again on my computer, right? Um, and um, so, <laughs> yeah, so I had this? to, no, but I thought, you know, if we did it in the evening time, there's, like the Cave de la Huchette, the jazz bar. There's a few really cool wine bars in the area where you can go down. Okay, well, and those kinds of cars. Yeah, but not, yeah. You don't want to see my cave, I can assure you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that was one of the more obscure ideas. That's hilarious. I also get bachelorette parties who come through sometimes, so those are a little bit fun and interesting and a bit uh, <laughs> wild, yeah, yeah. What would you recommend for everyone to, when they walk in the street? What would I recommend yeah. for them to do? Um, always look up, yeah, because, well, keep an eye down too, you know, the, <laughs> but, um, but always look up. I mean, I've walked some of these streets thousands of times and um, a few months back, wherever I was going, I happened to look up and there were these 
sunflowers engraved over the doorway and they were practically like screaming out to say uh, bonjour you know and I thought how many times have I walked down this street before I've never noticed that and so always just put your phone down I you know how many people walk past that door every day and miss it because they're so consumed with their screen like so just take a moment live in the moment and pay attention to what's going on around and above you so yeah. Where are those I, they were by um, Plas Furstenberg in the, um, in the, they're engraved, in, they're yeah, kind of they're carved engraved. into the door, yeah, yeah, they're above the windows, mm -hmm. yeah, um, in St. Germain de Prey, but I'm sure there's many other around the city as well, so, mm -hmm. no? That's really good advice though. Thank you. No, it, it really is because I find myself sitting on the bus or whatever and looking at my phone or yeah. reading and realizing, why am I not looking around mm -hmm. with all this mm -hmm. beauty? How stupid is that, you know? Yeah, there's, like I said, there's always something new to discover, yeah. no matter how many times you take that same path. Yeah, David, hi. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year to you too. Sorry, can everyone hear me? Yeah, I, I was going to say, uh, and it's a leading question because we know each other, but um, are there places where people don't book because they don't know about it, um, but you really think people should definitely go and visit and it's kind of something off the beaten track that they miss and that you recommend? Well, I... I do offer an off the beaten path tour like here in Paris that starts at Republique just down the way here and you know how many people say oh I've never been here I've been to Paris so many times yeah and I mean there's other nearby chateaux not just Versailles you know which is like the star of the show but we have Fontainebleau that's not too far well you live not far from there hey yeah, yeah. Um, there's Chantilly, there's Vincennes as well. So I think it's Vol always. Volivicante. Volivicante, oh. yeah. There's So as well. So mm -hmm. with the uh, cherry blossoms in Vincennes. April. So there's lots. yeah, yeah. So there's War Valley's not too far. That might be a next idea for April in Paris. So April in Wa. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good. That's a good idea too. Mm -hmm. I mean, your situation is endless, actually. Yeah, it really is. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it's just finding the time to do the research now that things are really picking up. I mean, this past year, I had around 600 requests. Yeah, so uh, revenge tourism, someone called it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, made me laugh. It's like, that makes sense. And already, we're only a week into 2023, and I have nearly 200 bookings. So, yeah, it's... Uh, gearing up to be that busiest year mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. do you have any plans to expand and have others join you in doing some of the tours or will you keep it exclusively yourself? no no i do work with a with a handful of guides that help along the way too yeah of course yes yes so huh? okay anyone else have any questions no no okay i don't believe it hmm? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Well, well thank, thank you, you everyone. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You guys can <laughs> hang out as long as you like, <laughs> mingle, drink. Don't forget to pay for your drinks because you, we've got plenty of time. So you might as well kind of <laughs> get to know one another. Okay. Okay. Right, thank, you. thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yay. Thank you.